my thing. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to uh, our regularly scheduled October board meeting. And could I have a uh, roll call, please? Yeah. Karen Anderson here. Tammy Hines here. John Long here. Greg Meyer here. Scott Middlecamp here. Greg O'Connor here. Lisa Schumacher here. We have a quorum. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome visitors. Um, in this time, we do have public comments. Anybody that would like to, uh, from the public, would like to make a comment? And please step on up and state your name. And, uh, three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Um, my name is Cindy McMullen. Um, I've been here before. I, I was actually a teacher in the district, so I think uh, many of you know me. Um, I am here tonight to, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all your hard work. Um, I know with this very, very difficult situation, it's really been a, a no-win situation for everybody, and I just want to say I appreciate the hard decisions that you've had to make and the situation that you're dealing with. And I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate all that you're doing with the teachers, uh, the administrators, and you all. Um, so I just want to say thank you before I got started. Um, I am here uh, just to try to quickly talk about um, one of the resolutions that for the upcoming IASB meeting. It's Resolution 2. Is everybody familiar with Resolution 2? All right, cool. All right. So, yeah, it basically is talking about um, if it's adopted, the IASB would um, uh, agree to support um, raising the child safety, basically a child access prevention law here in Illinois. Um, currently, our current law uh, applies to minors under the age of 14. And what they're looking for is, is encouraging uh, our Illinois legislation to raise that to uh, minors under the age of 18 so that it covers our entire uh, school population from kindergarten to 12th grade. Um, I know that the uh, the rationale for that is that the data shows that stronger uh, child access prevention laws help to reduce the numbers of suicides, unintentional shootings, and math, uh, school shootings that we see. And um, there's a lot of data to support that. The IASB, the, the committee, uh, the resolution committee has, I know they've recommended to not adopt this because they said um, it doesn't deal directly with issues inside a school district. And I disagree with that. Um, I feel that uh, school districts do deal with school shootings. I mean, they're called school shootings for a reason because they do happen within a school district. Um, are we not requiring our staff and um, our students to um, participate in active shooter drills every year? Are we not spending money to fortify and secure our buildings so that intruders can't get in? And are we, I, I, just last year, the IASB had a resolution on um, the agenda to, uh, and they supported it, the uh, resolution committee supported the resolution that would allow school districts to arm teachers. Uh, because of school shooting. So last year, apparently, they thought that that was an issue that did directly impact our school district. And the only thing that's changed now is their attitude on that. So I think that um, they're wrong, that um, raising the, this, this is going to be a very minor thing, raising the age. Really, I, I hate doing this. I hate <laughs> talking in front of people, but Really, what compelled me to come tonight was, as a former teacher, um, was the issue. Not there's just school shootings, are, yes, are, are a major thing, but suicides are a major thing. And I don't know if you all remember, but there was a student in 2012 by the name of Travis Self. And Travis Self, in April of 2012, he was a 16-year-old junior here at Columbia High School, and he shot and, and killed himself. I had Travis as a student. Uh, I knew Travis. He was a very sweet, thoughtful, uh, caring young man. I can remember him coming in. He was in ROTC, and I can remember him coming into my class at the beginning in his you know, days that he had to wear his uniform. It was wonderful. 
uh, coming in with his friends, laughing. They always had interesting conversations. They would always come in early, and they were talking with each other and having a good time. And uh, I forgot to bring my shirt. Um, Travis, one day, I, was just, I must have asked him what he was doing for the weekend. He was going out with his grandpa, and he were part of the Missouri Operation Clean Stream. They were a clean stream team, and they were going out to um, uh, participate in a stream cleanup over the weekend. And I mentioned that how, how I thought that was really awesome, and you know, I'd love to do something like that. That next week, he came back. He had a, a T-shirt for me. He brought me a, a T-shirt, which I keep, and I always think of Travis. Uh, with that t-shirt. Um, Travis lived with his grandparents, and I know he was very, uh, he loved his grandparents, especially he was attached to his grandfather. They did a lot of things together. And in March of 2012, his grandfather died of cancer. And I think with everything going on, with the, the death of his grandfather and all the normal things a 16-year-old has to deal with, it was just too much. And in a moment of pain and despair, he accessed a gun and was able to end his life. Now, he was 16, I, and his, I read that his grandfather was an NRA member, which to me indicates he knew about gun safety. He was aware, he was probably very concerned. I'm sure he trained, he taught his, his grandchildren about safe gun handling and safe gun storage. But the law only applied to kids under the age of 14. Travis was 16. He was a very dependable, reliable, stable kid. So the law didn't apply to him. But I wonder if it had, if his grandfather might have taken, there might have been extra precautions that they might have taken that he would not have been able to access that gun if the law had been for kids under the age of 18. And so I think that if we can prevent the, the loss of a life, especially one, you know, like Travis, then we should do it. It's a very small thing to do, in my opinion. It's a very small act to, to support this resolution, but it would go a long way to save, um, to keep us from having these big losses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else from the audience? Okay, on to correspondence. Do we have anything uh, for board correspondence going on? Nothing going around there. On to the consent agenda, uh, items four and five. Did you want to walk through that with us, Mr. Merrill? The minutes are all there. The financials are all there as, as they are every month. Um, there were no questions, concerns. We've got some res resignations um, that clarified, like the Rebecca Fields. She's resigned from the project custodian, but she still will be an employee as a cook. Um, we've got the employment of some of the employment personnel, uh, certified personnel. And we have to extracurricular assignments. Um, I did have a question regarding one of them. Uh, what that was, so. Right, I'd like, I'd like to have Jeremy Donald removed from the consent agenda and discussed in closed session. Okay. So, with that one modification, I would recommend that we approve the consent agenda as presented with the action item to be done after closed session. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to. There's a correction. Um, on the budget hearing uh, roll call, it should be seven A's versus one. You got the minutes? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. The um, open session regular minutes of September 24th? Yeah, for the public budget hearing. The motion that was carried is seven A's and it's seven on the other there. So the consent agenda would that change to the minutes and the exclusion of the individual? Okay. Can I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended? Motion. motion by Karen Anderson, second by Tammy Hines. Can you do a roll call vote for me, please, Tam? Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. Craig Long? I'm sorry, John Long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a lot of credit for no work. No work. What about you, John? What do you uh, think? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Craig 
Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Motion carries on to the uh, next item on the agenda, communications, reports, and presentations. Uh, enrollment is there at your um, table. Um, it's nice to see it split out and uh, um, the percentages and all those uh, good things. Administrative reports, principal's report. We have uh, Mr. Reeves here. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, we are in our third week of hybrid. And we're plugging right along. Uh, yesterday we had the PSAT NMS QT, which is in essence the practice test, the practice version of the SAT. Had 50 students take that yesterday, and we did have the SAT for our seniors, who should have taken it as juniors, uh, a few like a few weeks back in that first week of, of our hybrid, and both both sessions went very well. Uh, we had two. We had our sports programs wrap up. The only ones that went in the uh, fall were our, our cross country teams and our golf teams, and, and all had successful seasons. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. On to assistant superintendent report. Um, the main uh, topic I wanted to discuss was the school improvement plans. Um, this year, if you remember last year, changed the format a little bit and tried to really make them more smart goals. Um, this year, if you looked through them, they are not as smart as in the past. And that is really because our data sources are lacking right now. Uh, we didn't have our, our own internal benchmarks that took place at the end of the year. And we didn't have the state or federal benchmarks that we would normally be using for academic goals. Uh, and we also don't have all the survey data that we normally would have used. Do you guys need one? I just want to make sure I didn't know if they were in there. Good. So um, that made it difficult to make them more measurable. So a lot of what's in here is more of a uh, qualitative than a quantitative measure. Um, however, we have the action steps. And also, you'll notice the other big changes. Last year, you saw one, one per school. And then we did that, but they were all kind of tied together. This year, because of what we're trying to accomplish, it's kind of a very challenging year, is we're all aiming for the same exact thing. It, all of these goals um, will vertically uh, align, no matter of the age group. So one of them, the SMART goal number one, um, will attract, mentor, and retain highly qualified staff. As you know, we've had some challenges recently with some um, key areas of getting people and then retaining them. So I think. There's some changes that we could put into place to work towards that. Um, so there's some action steps there. Um, student performance will improve by adding technological resources as funding allows. So that goes kind of along with what we've been doing with the one-to-one, -one, but then also providing support to our teachers um, in implementing that with fidelity and effectiveness. So continuing to do so as we can. Um, that will be an ongoing, and I, that would obviously be an ongoing beyond this year, not just for the remote learning. Uh, SMART Goal 3 is related more to academics in the areas that we have testing, which is our language arts, math, and science. So that is more towards addressing our tiered approaches, both tier one, which is what happens in the classroom. Um, as you know, there's many concerns with what happened in the spring of where that gap is. Um, but we are just now being able to measure that. Um, we have Ames Web testing is happening at the elementaries. And then we will begin doing our map testing. Normally, those things have already transpired. But obviously, um, we do have the capability of doing map remotely. But there was concerns um, of the reliability of the results. Um, so if we could hold it off a little bit and bring it back in to the school, then we were going to do that. So that's where we're at. Um, and then the SMART Goal 4. Um, is dealing with our character education and social emotional, and we're going to be trying to use data from the spring to spring to help us with that. And then the last one um, is that college and career and military, and that is just we're saying that we want to see no matter where those kids are now, no matter the age you're, we want all of our kids to make growth. We can't really say now how much that's going to be. I can't per per percentage on that. Um, but hopefully once we get some of this data back, we will be able to make some goals for those students. 
So we want 100% of the students to meet their individual growth goals, basically. So that's the plan. So it looks a little different, so I wanted to outline that to you than what we had last year. Thank you. Good. On to item three, superintendent report. All right. Um, I'm going to start with the FOIAs. Smart Procure has come back again with their quarterly report. We're getting quite used to them and keep sending them the same information. We had a new one for a company called ADAC. They're asking for our special ed numbers. We responded accordingly. We didn't give them any names or anything like that, just aggregate numbers of what they were asking for. Um, that said, uh, I want to update the board about the district goals, the strategic plans, as you guys are probably well aware, they were extended through the 1920 school year. Technically, that means we don't have any plans, uh, a strategic plan or any goals. We have the document, um, we have a list of things that didn't get done and we're currently kind of working on that as we, as we get our moments and chances. Courtney and I have discussed we're developing a plan to develop a plan. And so what we would like to do is bring you next month a plan, an overview of who would be involved, how it would go, but develop a new strategic plan for the district. Um, we're thinking we would do it next semester, start it next semester, continue it into the summer, and then for next school year actually have a, a strategic plan that we've created for a five or six year term. Um, to be completely honest right now, our main goal is really to survive COVID, keep everybody healthy, and get kids back into school. And so we've been spending a lot of time on that, which I think is time well spent. Um, speaking of that, we had a meeting today with our um, return to school committee. And so I would like the board members to check their calendars because we're going to meet again on October 28th. Uh, Mr. Wagner wants a few more weeks to see how to be quarantining goes and how it spreads and we're looking for a special board meeting on the evening of October 28th. That would be Wednesday, I believe in two weeks. Anybody, anybody have any conflicts with that? Wednesday evening? No problem. All right. Good. We want to have a time on that. Do you want to do 6 p.m. or 7 p.m.? The only action item would be any changes or recommendations for the return to school or expanding it or whatnot. Anybody object to 6 p.m.? Is that right? Good. Good. Can we get 6 p.m. on October 28th? We'll have that noted and we will get that started. Um, this court you kind of alluded to the school improvement plans are different this year for a lot of reasons. Um, the school report cards will be coming out. None of our designation changed. Um, because they didn't do the assessments at the end of last year, we are at the same designation as we had last, but the year prior. So typically right now they would give us our new designation and they would tell us that this is um, to be held secret until a certain date. And they basically told us that there's going to be no changes. So what we were last year we are in, which is uh, three exemplary and one um, commendable. So of the, of the four, we've got three in the highest category and one just below that, so it's excellent. And then the last thing is, um, I want you to be aware we're going to be bringing you recommendations to purchase buses. We've gone out to bid, um, it's in the budget, so we, we've approved the budget to spend the money on the buses. We don't need to spend them until we approve the amounts, and, um, but we have gone out to bid, and so we're slowly getting them in. In fact, I think we got one document today giving us the price. So next month we're hoping to have uh, the recommendation of two buses. That's, so, that's on our normal rotation that yeah. we've set up, correct? Okay, cool. Okay. So what companies are we getting bids from? Do you know what kind? I do not. Okay. I do not. I would imagine Central States would be one. I would imagine... Um, that's easier where we get on Central States. But. Yeah, like, like they're there. I mean, they, they do most of them all. And so I'd be surprised if we don't get a bid from Central States. The one that starts with an L is another one that you'll see often in bids. Lay Law. Lay Law is another one. Uh, the Midwest Transit's in Swansea also. Yeah, you get, get some from the Midwest Transit. I've seen those yeah, before, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, historically there's been very few bus dealerships. Right. The gap is only like a couple of them that actually, actually is. And we've had just two different lines of buses. Some states usually there's Bluebird and the Lewis Rand usually international dealer. Yeah. And we've got that mix. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, great. On item.
item seven, items for action. Uh, oh, sure. So if we have any comments or concerns or anything like that about returning to school, we save that for the special school board meeting then? Oh, um, yeah. Okay. If you want to call me tomorrow, we can discuss it as well. So. Okay. Uh, item seven, items for action. Uh, the approval of Trumco roof work. Yeah. Um, talk to that. We've, we've met numerous times um, and discussed these roofs um, really thoroughly. And at this point, one of the interesting things is we, we agreed to do roof work at the high school and to buy the warranty. We've not yet paid for the warranty. And in our analysis, we've decided that the warranty is not money well spent. It doesn't cover the labor costs, and it's a prorated material cost, and although you know, it's, just, it's a document, it's money not well spent. So at this point in time, I'd like to just tell the board that I don't think that we are going to secure the warranty for high school. The work is done. They'd be happy to secure it for the 10 years. It's not like that's going to change any without the warranty or with the warranty. It's just money that if we need to, we can put into the parents. Um, by the same token, the recommendation here, we took out the warranties and are just paying for the repairs to get them up to what the company would be pleased to put them back under warranty. These are originally trim code roofs. They are um, kind of like going out to it. There's been some questions about bidding. And, you know, um, they're the only ones that can really do these repairs on their roofs. We wouldn't go out to bid for a repair on our HVAC systems. We've had other roofing companies come in through our architects and explore this. And so we've looked at it from a lot of angles and we've spent a lot of time on it and the recommendation would be to go forward with that. Um, does anybody from the committee have anything you want to point out?
any other questions on, on the uh, root bit? Seeing none, I'm going to entertain a motion uh, to approve the Trumco work, including RQ, not to exceed $9,000, and Eagle View, not to exceed $38,900, and not to include the uh, warranty. I'll make that one. Motion by Greg Meyer, second, second. second by John Long. Kim? Tammy Hines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Yes. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. All right, on to items B, the 2020-2021 uh, School Improvement Plans for Eagle View Park, BCMS, and CHS. Gordon, you really went over them pretty well. If there's any questions or comments, but the administration will recommend we approve them as presented. Any other questions for Courtney on those? Seeing none, I'd entertain the motion to approve the 2020 2021 school improvement plans for Eagle View Park, the CMS, and CHS as uh, submitted. I'll make a motion. motion by Lisa Schumacher, second by. I'll second. Second by Tammy Hines. Kim, can you do a roll call vote for us, please? John Long? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. On to item C, approval of first reading of board policies, press issue 105. Did you? Yeah. I, 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 the big picture thing is that a lot of them have to do with the Title IX changes. Yep. Um, so this brings us up to legal code. I did include in the board packets some specific questions, like we don't have the dean of students, so we didn't include those words. And so if there's any questions or comments on any of those questions or the replies to them, um, let me know. Otherwise, I'd, I'd recommend we approve them as presented. And again, for the board and, and for those watching, this is the first reading. We would be um, following this up with a second reading of future dates. Well, this is the first reading. To okay. approve. Yeah, yeah. So we don't approve it at this time. Though. Right. I'm sorry. So, any questions at this time? And again, that's our first reading, so we have some time. Seeing none, I entertain a motion to uh, accept the first reading of, uh, of board policies as presented. Yeah, yeah, we have to approve the first reading, and then we go, and then we do a second reading. And we Usually it's a voice vote, but since we're on a, this, we got to do a roll call for this. <laughs> so, a yeah. motion by Karen Anderson, second by. Second, second by Greg O'Connor. Can you do a roll call vote for me, please? Craig Meyer? Yes. Scott Middlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Uh. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Um, motion carries. And on to item eight, discussion items. The first item on the uh, agenda is the ISB, IASB resolution, student safety and protection plans. Yes. You have in front of you eight new resolutions, three reaffirming existing positions, and one new belief statement. And um, through the packet that was sent out, you saw whether or not the ISB is saying that they should oppose or support or the recommendation of the committee that reviews it. Um, Karen Anderson has been the voting delegate, I believe, for some time, yep. and, and will be representing us. Um, we had a speaker tonight that talked about resolution number two, which was the gun storage law. We also had an email from Chris Carpenter. Peters. Yeah. Um, basically saying the same thing. They, their organization would like to see us support that gun storage instead of the recommendation of opposing it. Basically what it means is, you know, the accepting of the age to the higher level. So that's the only one I know of that, that might go against IASB. I would recommend you guys discuss that and inform Karen as to which way the board desires. And then we can bring up any other issues on these if you have any points of question. you want um, to read that discussion? Yeah, first, first of all, I was just going to say, normally the Resolutions Committee meets on Saturday morning of the 
um, IASB joint convention. And um, due to the COVID, the convention's not being held in person in Chicago, it's being held virtually. And so it will be, um, the bulk of the conference will be held on Friday. Um, and it's totally virtual. But the, the resolutions committee, it is in the bylaws of the IASB that the resolutions committee must meet and that the delegates will vote on these. So what's happening this year is there is a session next week and then one a couple weeks later that will be, uh, they'll be sending the link to the delegates to link into it and it'll be open for discussion and they will be discussing all of each of these um, items. Um, from what I've gotten information so far, they will probably record those. I'm not sure, but that was the last that I heard, which would be something different because normally the discussion that takes place during the resolution session happens and nobody ever sees it. And some of it goes on for a long time. Um, but I don't, if they do have a link, I'll let the board members know and I can, can share that with you. But um, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. Um, and I don't know how it's going to go because it's like, okay, if you want to speak, you push the little button at the bottom that says, I'm raising my hand. So um, you can answer, put questions out in the chat. And so I, I just, they don't really know for sure what, what all is going to happen. I haven't figured out yet how they're going to have this vote because normally it's a vote where you hold up a paddle and they go through and count all the paddles. So somehow they're going to know how many people are, are in the room and who all is in there. So that would be interesting. But um, if you have questions or concerns about any of these and you've seen the recommendations where they say do not adopt and the uh, resolutions committee has given their recommendation for do not adopt or, or their reason for adopting. Um, if the submitting school district gets a do not adopt and wants to appeal, they can do that and they have a uh, amount of time. And the uh, resolution to the gun storage the submitting district has appealed the recommendation of the committee and will have an opportunity to bring the proposal's proposal to the delegate assembly. If it says do not adopt and has not been appealed, there's no discussion. They just move on. But if there's an appeal that's been filed, they will have discussion. So there will be discussion on this item. And I need a consensus and we won't take a vote, but I do need a consensus opinion on how you feel about it. Um, the IASB has said that they recommended not to do this because they, the vast majority of the IASB position statements deal directly with issues that happen inside the school district and things. And um, the last two years, you know, there's been one on there about having um, staff, teachers carrying um, weapons or being um, trained in firearms and those they uh, recommended to adopt and the vote on the floor was no. So it was a close vote both times but the votes were no. Um, so this time they're saying do not adopt. So. Uh, I just need to know which way, as a consensus, you feel and how you would like to have me go forward. Anybody got comments? Thoughts? I do. I would like to see the age expanded to 18 because that way, I mean, a lot of the high school, the school shootings are at high school age. So the parents having to keep the guns locked up away from the 18, until they're 18, makes sense to me. So you're saying support the resolution? I don't, I forgot. No. Yeah, support. Yeah, she, she would like to support yeah, the support, resolution. Yeah, support, that would be supporting the resolution. Okay. Which is what the speaker today and the email both would like for you to do. 
the and the Semitic district has appealed to, to have to discussion. Down. So I, I know there's going to be a lengthy discussion. Yeah, I, I agree with Tammy. I, I don't have a problem with the recommendations of the board on anything with the exception of number two, which is the gun deal. And you know, guns is something that is a, is a very decisive issue for most people, but gun safety, I don't think, should be. I think uh, going up to 18 to secure firearms, you're not prohibiting firearms, you're not discouraging firearms, you're just preaching or encouraging safe or mandating safe storage of them so the kids can't get to it. So I, I can't imagine anybody would have a problem supporting that personally. But But do I have a consensus that you would want me to vote to to adopt this resolution? And what happens with these resolutions is these are the um, stance that the IASB takes and also it's where the lobbyists are working with our uh, congressional leadership within the state. Okay, any other? Comments, questions? And this meets, I'll be meeting on November 14th, which will be before our next board meeting. So well, we'll have a special meeting. Oh, yeah, but it's meeting. still, it'll happen in, I mean, before our next regular yeah. November board meeting. Yep, exactly. That'll be the but Wednesday after. Normally, convention follows after that meeting, and that's why I wanted to get yeah. this out here tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, on the, any more questions for Karen? On item nine, the board president's prerogative, seeing none, I'm going to go to, um, we are, uh, would like to go into closed session or executive session for purposes of the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity and purposes of discussion of collective bargaining items and discuss student disciplinary cases. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? To executive session. Uh, John Long? Second. Greg Meyer, second. Can you do a roll call vote for me, please, Kim? Scott Littlecamp? Yes. Greg O'Connor? Aye. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Karen Anderson? Yes. Tammy Hines? Yes. John Long? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Okay, for those uh, that are here and those that are online, we will be um, shutting down to go into executive session. We do have items for action after executive session, so if you want to hang out online and wait for us to come back, you can you can see those uh, see those items there. And um, 